All right. Namaste, everyone. Today we're going to talk about Svati Nakshatra. So Svati Nakshatra, or Swati, the V or the W sound is interchangeable in Sanskrit, like we've been talking about. Um, they're basically kind of the same sound because Sanskrit is based on how you pronounce a thing. And so you move the same lip movements for va as wa. It's like barely noticeable. So it's the same kind of sound. So you can hear the word swa or sva as the word for the self. So svati is like the, the self nakshatra of the moon. So as we talked about how, as I started this course off by saying that the nakshatra show the conditioning of the mind, this is the conditioning of the mind towards the self, just being self-reliant, self-focused, svati, the selfie nakshatra. Also, it's, as I mentioned, the keywords of nakshatra's video, one of the keywords for svati is the selfie nakshatra because people with a lot of Swati stuff will take a lot of selfies because it's who they are and what they're doing that is important in this incarnation when you have Swati stuff going on. Other incar I mean, all relationships are so much a part of life, but at the end of the day, we come in and we leave on our own. And so there needs to be some nakshatras that focus us back on ourself, right? And so, this is one of those nakshatras. It can also mean the self-born, Swati. It can kind of just mean that. And uh, its ruling planet is Rahu. And that's very interesting because the last nakshatra we had that was very much like self-focused and a loner type of nakshatra was Ardra, the other one ruled by Rahu. And Rahu does re make one an outcast like Rahu represents outcasts or people who are like who were the Chandalas or the even the untouchables or people who go and live in the forest or go and live away from people who go and live by themselves and want to be on their own you know like Shiva Ardra's star ruled by Shiva it's also a Rahu one Shiva is very much a loner if you know the mythology you know just sitting on the Himalayas up in Mount Kailash all by himself immersed into himself so Svati is a nakshatra similar to that, has a similar Rahuvin type of vibe, as well as the other Rahu nakshatra, which is Shatabishak, ruled by Varuna, who rules the sea and is kind of like also separate and, you know, underwater and remote and removed from normal life. So these three nakshatras really will make someone much more of a loner, much more of a hermit, much more of a recluse much more of someone who's removed from normal life. This one, Svati, particularly makes one like really just self-reliant and removed and individual. And they're just such a unique individual with this nakshatra. And that's so perfect because it's ruled by Vayu, the god of the wind, the god of prana. Vayu is the wind god, <clears throat> but it's like, think of it more in prana, in that sense. Vayu does rule the wind, but he's, but if you think about the wind, I just brought wind into my body when I breathed in, and now I just brought wind out of me when I exhaled. So wind is related to prana. So it's actually like Rudra was the storm god. So this is why I want to distinguish this. Again, once again, Ardra and Svati are connected with this Rahu connection. Um, but Rudra ruling Ardra, Ardra is more of the nakshatra of truly just like wind storms, you know, and storms, uh, and the Maruts were the gods that were related more to that, but Svati can still do that. And I'll show examples of that where you'll notice, like, I have the chart of the widest tornado ever or things like that. You'll notice both Ardra and Svati are involved. But Svati is more about like wind in the sense of prana, in the sense of the breath. Think about how the moment you take your first breath, you become an individual. You become separate from your mother's womb. You're officially an individual and we officially chart your birth from the moment of that first breath to see this individual's life. 
That is how Swati works, and that's why it's the star of the self and the individual, because it's ruled by Vayu. And the moment Vayu enters into a new thing, he breathes life into that thing, and it becomes an individual, unique thing. So separate from the rest, and that's what Svati deals with, being separated from the rest. And this is why Svati's symbol is the symbol of a sword, because what does a sword do? It cuts, it separates, it separates you from another thing. You see, so Svati is the star of separating, of being, um, distinguishing yourself, being an individual, right? And it's, it's, it's just, you'll notice that it's an extremely strong star for that. So it makes extremely unique individuals. So the moon conditions the mind in different nakshatras. In this nakshatra, it shows a mind, it shows a soul who's extremely individual and extremely unique from past lives. And is going to live a very unique and individual life. And in fact, probably be harder to predict than most people as a result. Okay, so the symbol of the sword is, is very cool because um, sword is also related to the sun. And in Jaimini system, the sun is the, if you have the sun as your Atmakarika, you'll use a sword as your weapon because it deals with, again, the sun is the plan of the self, being like straightforward, uh, confrontational, going straight into the thing with a sword. You know, you're not like taking a shot from far away from a safe distance like a bow and arrow. So uh, Swati is, again, very much just this self-oriented star. It's um, kind of wants to be... Uh, you know, it, it can be a little bit my way or the highway in some ways like that because it's so focused on itself. Um, the sword, it's so willing to separate. Um, and so this sword can also, or sorry, the sword and all this, this symbolism, it symbolizes self-reliance. And uh, that can be spiritual self-reliance, relying on the soul with a capital S, or just self-reliance on the ego one way or the other, depending on how good or bad Swati is. But these are people who are very independent, okay? And um, they're very able to just cut away, to separate from things. Um, and it's kind of part of who they are. Um, it, this is therefore the star of independence, okay? Um, and... Like I said, Swati can mean self-born. Well, see, in one, you'll see this quality manifesting also in them, tending to have, not always, but they can have a more conservative kind of attitude or vibe or approach because conservative is like not wanting to change everything constantly. But then at the same time, it is a moving and changing and unsteady nakshatra. So this is not 100% of the time going to be true, of course. Um, but you'll notice that <clears throat> people or cultures or whatever that are very big with conservative <clears throat> qualities also have a lot of the Svati nakshatra. For example, Russian culture. Russia is actually very related to Svati nakshatra. Uh, <clears throat> Svati is Arcturus, the constellation, which forms the bear constellation. Russia has deeply been related to the bear since ancient times um and so this arcturus the svati constellation it is also been anciently related to the bear since long ago and to russia and think about how russia is like an extremely independent country and um, it's a cold northern region, so you think about like wind, as like wind is a cooling, cold quality, you know? And so prana and wind and vayu, they live in that cold area, and they don't seem to be as affected by it as, as others. Russia is incredibly self-sustaining, and so you'll find that these nakshatra, yeah, swati is just the self-sustaining nakshatra. Swati nakshatra people will love to have everything be self-sustaining. People that live on self-sustaining farms or that sort of thing, they love Swati. Um, one guy I know who lives in like a self-sustaining energy house and everything, he's got a very strong Swati planet in his pada. Um, and 
This is where it gets really interesting is we're going to read the Sutra and Taittiriya Brahmana, what it says about Svati, and it describes Svati as the nakshatra of the strange things. And so, you know, that individuality, when, you be, when you're really an individual, you're stranger in some way than others. That's what makes you different. And so, again, think about how prana, the breath, the moment the prana and the breath of Vayu breathes in you, you become a unique, different person with a unique birth chart and who is unique and therefore strange in a way from the rest. So this is the star of that. It's the star of the self-sustaining everything. It is the star of like individuality. And um, in terms of countries and nations, it relates to Russia and other Eastern European nations as well. Uh, you know, Russia was recently, at the time of this writing, this is in 2024, <clears throat> I'm in America, there's a ton of American propaganda constantly being pushed on to me of being very anti-Russia, for whatever reason, whether that's true or not, hard to say with the way our media is these days. But when you actually look at videos of Russia, it's like, oh, you can get like, you know, when we when the rest of the world tried to cut them off during the Ukraine Russia war, Russia was kind of fine. And you could still, you know, like the now I won't say fine because I'm not an expert on these things, but they just they're still there. You know what I mean? They just kept trucking along because they have this spotty self-reliant quality. <clears throat> so in a way, yeah, and then this is where the selfie next chapter, if you're if you're a Swati client is more like, you know, like a young vain naive young girl then you're gonna see that selfie manifesting more that selfie quality right look at me look at me myself look at what i'm doing me 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 um but this is just one inflection of this star all the nakshatras are gonna inflect and pronounce and express in a variety of ways uh this one kind of you can think of it as having a little bit of like a urine a uranus like uranus type of quality or even Aquarian type of quality because those are the star, that's the planet and the sign of being very individual and very unique and things like that. And what's really cool is that Arcturus, the star that this actually relates to, Arcturus is what we call it. It's one of the only ones that's not a constellational group. So Svati, Ardra, and Chitra are the only nakshatras that are not constellations, they're just like singled out stars. Ardra is Betelgeuse, Chitra, oh my god, I'm blanking on Chitra, but whatever, we'll talk about that in the video on that one, but then Svati is Arcturus, and um, these three are like separate stars and very big independent kind of stars. Isn't that fascinating? Because this makes one more independent and not as group social oriented. One's kind of moving away from the group with this nakshatra, um, and that just fits perfectly with that idea of that just being a solitary star up there. Oh, and this is the other thing is that Arcturus is way out of the way of the ecliptic. So Arcturus is like not near the moon. Um, it's one of the furthest off from the path of the moon of the stars that it will touch. And in fact, this is what I've talked about already before, but astronomy and like a lot of Vedic astrologers aren't really doing that much astronomy and it's just shocking when you like for example the best example is like Mars and Shravana. Shravana is Altair it's so far away from the ecliptic too that like Mars and Shravana is nowhere near Shravana and people will just read like oh my software says Mars is in Shravana -da 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 -da. like <clears throat> when Shravana could be here and Mars could be there and they're just it's just they're not like it's it's not that close of a thing that people think unless they look with their own eyes Arcturus is kind of like this too, where the, it's further away from the ecliptic, which is the path that the moon goes around as it's going through all these nakshatras. So that's very interesting. And then also on another level, uh, it's at in this yuga, in this current age, Svati is falling in the end of Libra and the beginning of Scorpio. So it symbolizes like leaving social Libra and moving into Scorpio, the shadow, the self, the mysteries of life. <clears throat> now that's based on using the nakshatras as separate, using the tropical zodiac and the, side, the nakshatras keeping them sidereal. Traditionally, nakshatras are seen as sidereal and rashis are seen as sidereal. But there's a huge movement of people starting to shift from that because the shastras don't actually even say that. And it's just one of these complicated calculation errors that seems to have 
been carried through the ignorant dark age of Kali Yuga. And so <clears throat> it's that would, you know, Swati would would follow a different sign in different ages, you know? And so in this age, it's kind of fitting that it's leaving Libra and entering Scorpio. But either way, if it wasn't, no matter where it was, this nakshatra does deal with making one very individual, unique, and like uh, separate from the rest. 